Hi, I'm Andy. I'm one of the Secret Stash Bros, and in this video, Dad and I are going to show you how to build a gliding chair set with a secret compartment. So for this week's project, Dad and I are going to be making a gliding chair. It's kind of a mix between a rocking chair and a lazy boy. This is something neither of us have built before, so there's going to be kind of a big learning curve with each of these parts. And we will, and we will try and explain it to the best of our ability. So you'll just have to bear with us. I bought these bearing, um, they're called ridge bearings. They got a little ridge on them. Actually, these are actually made for a lawnmower, for the wheels on a push lawnmower. They got 16 of them for 30 bucks. What Andy and I are going to do today is um, I have these larger bearing uh, caps. This is going to go over the top of this and that's going to screw into the wood. It's going to help hold the bearing in place. So you can see this picture here. Um, they call for putting screws just to hold the bearing ridge down. But I'm upgrading to putting a bearing over the top of that so it holds this thing in evenly. Um, this is going to have a lot of weight on it. I want it to last for a long time. Uh, most of the bolts that are in a glide chair are only like, like 3 eighths. So I, I went up a whole eighth to get a little more strength out of my, my, my hardware. So we're going to start with our foot stool. And something important to keep in mind is that these moving parts that are going to be moving, they're going to be made out of probably a hardwood. The rest of it's going to be made out of pine. We're going to make this out of hardwood because over the years, these pieces are going to get a lot of stress and we don't want them wearing down with a lot of use. So in terms of the hardware that we use, we paired a 2 inch 5 8 bolt with a sealed roller bearing and then use two 5 8 nuts with two washers and a lock washer. There are other hardware setups that you could use, but this was the one that we found online that seemed the cheapest, and we're all about keeping things cheap. Alright, so starting off here, Dad and I had to build our vertical and horizontal swing boards first. Your two vertical swing boards can be cut to the same lengths, but your top and bottom horizontal swing boards need to be cut to different lengths, and I'll get to that in just a moment. So one question you guys might be asking yourselves is why do we make these two bottom pieces different sizes or different lengths than each other. I don't know if you can see this, but this bottom runner and this top runner right over here, which is what we're making right now, the top one's taller because we need to create an angle. I'm doing this backwards here. To, yeah, there it is. We need to create this angle right here. I'm going the wrong direction. We need to create this angle like here. So the t that way when the bearings are offset from one another, there'll be an angle between the vertical joists is connecting the two runners. So right now Dad's just going to finish laying out the bearing holes on those pieces. Don't underestimate this step of laying out your bearing holes. It's probably one of the most important parts in this entire project. So take your time and make sure you get them all drilled right. For your outer bottom swing, this portion right here, you're going to have to drill three ledges for your bearing to rest on. These need to be extremely precise as to the fitting of your bearing. So make sure you have the right size Forstner bit for each ledge of your bearing. Two other things to keep in mind is that one, you need to keep both holes an equal distance away from each other, and two, you don't want to come through to the other side with your deepest hole, because otherwise your bearing won't fit tight enough to support any real weight in the long run. I apologize for not having any footage of us drilling the holes for our vertical arms. You'll see how they're constructed here in a moment, but essentially, you alternate drilling a concealed bearing hole on the top and a smaller hole on the bottom for a bolt and washer to connect the vertical and horizontal pieces. So now that we got all these pieces cut out just for our footstool, we're going to go and drill out the holes on these mega washers that we got. This is what's going to hold the bearing in place. When we stick this down in here, we want to be able to clamp it down in there so it doesn't move. Here in these clips, Dad's laying out the washer for the back side of our horizontal top board. 
However, we should not have drilled our small hole for a bolt first, mainly because when we went to drill the hole for the washer with our Forestner bit, we found that it couldn't stay in the center of the hole because the wood was gone. So just make sure that you drill your washer holes before your bolt holes. The bottom horizontal boards are the only ones out of the four arms that get holes drilled into the bottom of them. These pilot holes will be used to attach the decorative outer pieces that you can see Dad making here. Speak aboration. All right, we just built this piece here, it's right here. Okay, there's where the bearings go in. This is how it's going to go on there. So we're going to install bearings right now. Uh, I'm going to have Andy go, and he's got to put some Loctite. So all you have to do is drop it on there like that, just a drop, and then spin it on down. Put this in the vise and get a wrench and crank it. To the Okay, I should know that part works. All right, so we got the first set of pivot arms done here. Uh, we have the second ones done, but I just have to get them out of the wash. Ah, there we go. Ugh. Be a little wet, that'll work. All right, we have our two glides, and now we're gonna build our stand that holds the two glides, and then we'll make our top. So it's gonna be the connector in between? Yep, the two? it's gonna be this piece inside here, the legs that hold it. Hold the foot still up. Nice. This is supposed to be on the outside. That swinging mechanism? Yeah, these 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 pieces. This we got to do. Boy, well, I told you guys you'd have to bear with us. Luckily, we can just skip this part for you guys. All right, so now that we got our swing set up here, we're kind of faced with a decision on where to put our secret compartment. Originally, Dad was thinking of putting it in the seat. We were gonna build a small little box for it and then maybe have it flip up. But then we were, watch, we were looking at how this swing works, and let me show you here. Interestingly enough, even though these swings go side to side, if you pull up on them, I think it's like, yeah, like this, you can pop the top, and there'll be a whole gap down here. So what we're gonna, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the secret compartment down in this box. And so in order to access it, you have to lift the entire seat up to find it. Usually, how one of these gliding chairs works is they have a bar in the front and back of these swings, and that prevents it from swinging way too far back and forth. We're gonna skip that, or maybe just put one in to give it kind of some stability, but that way you'll be able to lift it all the way up. So that's what we're gonna try right now.
Okay guys, so that was actually several days worth of work. You can tell because Dad's face looks sweaty and totally happy. But we, he actually, this morning, had to remake this whole side because there was a crack on um, one of these joists right here. So he remade that entire thing this morning. Um, but we're not actually going to put a top on this thing because we don't know what size cushion we're gonna get yet. So we're gonna hold off on that and start on the chair. It's pretty much the same basic setup except everything's gonna be in a little bit different dimension. So you'll have to forgive us if we skip a couple parts because it's really just the same thing, just gonna be making it bigger. We'll show little tidbits and things that are really important, but we're gonna glaze over some stuff just because it's so similar to the footstool. So. All right, so we're not actually going to skip over the entire process of us making the swing portion for our chair. There are a couple things that you need to know, but let me just recap them now. So the main differences between our chair and footstool gliding systems is that one, we doubled the thickness of our swing arms so they could hold more weight. Two, we added designs in the bottom of our feet because we're fancy. Three, we angled and offset our horizontal swing arms so that we could create an angle with the back of the chair seat so that when you sat in it, it would automatically lean back, keeping you in the chair. Four, we had to grind off part of our mega washers because one of the offset bearing holes was too close to the edge. So we need to make it flat, and so we just grinded it off on our rotary grinder. Five, we doubled the joists for more support. And six, we added two wooden stops on both sides of the swing arms so that the chair wouldn't flip over if it went too far forwards or backwards. Oh yeah, and we also glued together all the boards for our seat. Now that we're done with that fun little recap, we're going to get started on making the seat. Let's do it. It is finifico.